astrophysics. So I'm going to show you how to calculate a theoretical and then compare that to experimental rotation curves. So a rotation curve is a plot of the velocity as a function of r for uh, stars orbiting in a galaxy. I mean, you could use it for the, for the anything, but we're going to talk about stars in a galaxy. So stars in a galaxy, uh, if you look at a galaxy, that's my picture of a galaxy. Maybe it's not the best picture, but that's my picture. We have a center, and then we have stars on the outside. And the center is much brighter, so we're going to assume the mass in the center is very high density, and then out of that is very low density. And we're going to use an approximation to calculate uh, and plot this V versus R. Okay, so let's assume our model for a solar, our galaxy looks like this. We have a galactic center with the radius, I'm going to call it R0, and a mass M0. And then outside of that, we're looking at it from the top. The density is so low that we don't even need to worry about it. Okay, so I need to actually calculate two velocity functions. One for the inside of the galactic center and then outside. So let's do the inside first, and I'm going to draw another picture. So here's my interior of the, the galaxy center. And I want to look at an object orbiting at some distance r. So there's a gravitational force pulling towards the center. So I can write Fg is going to be g m n m over r squared. And that's going to be mass times acceleration, but it's moving in a circle. So it's m v squared over r. Now, you'll notice here I put m in. According to Gauss's law for gravity, only the mass that's inside that circular orbit matters. This mass outside of that does not matter. And, and that it does matter technically. It's just that all that gravitational fields from that outer part cancel, so they don't, they don't contribute. So we only have the mass that's closer to the center that will contribute to that gravitational force. So we need to find an expression for mn from Gauss's law. So here's our mn. It's a sphere of radius r, and this is a sphere of radius r0. So I know if the density is uniform, then mn over that volume, which would be 4 thirds pi r cubed, is going to be the total mass m0 divided by the total volume 4 thirds pi r0 cubed. And I can solve for mn. Those cancel. I get mn is m0 r cubed over r0 cubed. Now I can put that in up here in this expression, and I get g m0 r cubed over r0 cubed, and I have an m r squared, right? There's my r squared, and that's going to be equal to m v squared over r. Now I have a bunch of r's in there, and some of them cancel. So uh, here I'm going to get that cancels that, and then if I move this up here, it gets squared. So and that mass cancels. So I get v squared is g m0 over r0 cubed r squared. And let's go ahead and write v as a function of r. So I'll just have to take the square root. v, I'm going to call this v inside. It's going to be the square root of g m0 over r0 cubed times r. So that says that as I get towards the galactic center, my orbital velocity goes to zero and it increases linearly. Now we need to do outside of that. So really the only thing that changes is outside of the galactic center, the mass inside is just m0. So I can just change that to m0 and then solve for the problem again. So let's put that as m0 because as I get a bigger and bigger radius, I don't have more mass, right? approximately, m0. So the mass cancels, and I get v squared is g m0, one of those cancels, over r, or v equals the square root of g m0 over r. And that's out. 
let's just plot this and see what it looks like. So what I'm going to do is just use G is 1, M is 1, R0 is 1, and then we can just plot this. I just want to plot it just because I think it'll make it, it'll make it make a little bit more sense. And we can kind of see what we're expecting versus what we get. So let's switch over to Python. Let's make a graph really quickly. Uh, hello, Python. Make this bigger. Uh, let's make a nice graph. Uh, G1 equals graph. X title equals, uh, let's call it just R. Uh, and I'm not going to use units. All the units are wrong. So Y title equals V. And then width 400, height 200. And then I'm going to say G equals 1, M0 equals 1, R0 equals 1, uh, R equals 0, DR equals, let's say, 0 0.1. I don't know. And then I'm going to make a function, F1 equals G curve, color equals color dot blue, uh, marker, and it's markers equals true. Now I'll just leave a dot every time I put a point right there. Um, let's put this at point 0.2. Okay, uh, while r is less than r0. Because, remember, I have two functions. So I'm going to actually plot two, two loops. I'm going to first go from r to r0, and then I'm going to use that function. And then after that, I'll go to r7r or something like that. So let's just calculate v. v, just like I said right there, vn is going to be the square root of g times mo divided by ro cubed, which they're all ones, doesn't really matter, uh, times r. And I'm going to plot that, f1.plot, r, v. Now, and then I'm going to increase my value of r. r equals r plus dr. Now let's do while r is less than, let's say, 7, seven times r0. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, except I have a new function for v, which is right here. Square root of g, square root g times mo divided by r. That's right. Right, okay. And I'm going to plot that, f1.plot r v, and then I'm going to increase my value of r. r equals r plus dr. And that should be it. Let's just see what happens. Okay, so there's our rotation curve. So this is what it should look like. It should decrease right here. Now, what happens if you, and, and so why do, we, why do we plot velocity versus time? Why do we care about that? Um, we care because we can get the velocity uh, by using the Doppler shift. We can look at a particular wavelength of light and see how it shifts. But this is what we would expect right here. We expect it to go up and then back down like that. But what we actually see is what's called a flat curve because it just stays constant. So if it stays constant, and we'll call that uh, V0, then what does that mean about the mass inside of that galaxy? So we know looking at the, at the image that's brighter in the center, right? So we know that the mass should decrease, but it doesn't. And this is where we get this idea of dark matter. And I'm not an astrophysicist. I hope you know that. Uh, so some of the things I say may not be 100% correct. But how, what, what kind of density function would work for this? Now, it gets a little complicated, okay? But let's just assume that uh, I have a flat curve all the way through. So that means a constant velocity, and I have a, a spherical distribution of mass. What density function would do that? So that's what I want to do. I want to I want to redo the problem and calculate the density function, a density function, not the correct one. Um, so suppose I have this. I have a distribution of mass, and then I have something orbiting at a distance r. And this is not uniform density. Instead, we have density uh, as some function of r. Okay. Now, I know that uh, I want a constant velocity. And, and so the question is, what kind of function would give me a constant velocity? Um, and, and so we need to decrease the density, but well, let's just do this. 
I'm just going to guess at a function. Okay. And I know a function that will work. I'm going to show you a function that works. I was trying to decide there. So let's say it's some constant b over r squared. So the density decreases as you get further away. And, and there's no center. Okay. I'm not going to include a galactic center, even though that would, that would mess things up a little bit. So if that's the case, uh, I need to find the mass n right here. So I need to find mass n. And that's my density function. So I can't just say, oh, the density times the volume, because as I get a larger and larger volume, my density function changes. So I actually have to integrate. Let's say that I break this into a shell, a shell of radius r. And I'm going to use r in my integral and in my function, which is a bad idea. You shouldn't do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And a thickness dr. Well, if I find that shell is going to have a constant density because it's all the same distance from the center. And so I can find the volume of the mass of that by taking the density function times dr. So this is going to be the mass n is going to be the integral from r equals 0 to r uh, rho of r times dv. But the volume of this dv is going to be equal to the surface area of a sphere, 4 pi r squared, times the thickness dr. And so you can imagine unwrapping that whole thing, and I have a square. Okay, and, and the square is a thickness of dr, so it's really a cube. So that would be my volume. And it only depends on r, so we only have a one-dimensional integral, which is kind of nice. So mn is going to be the integral from r equals 0 to r. Again, you shouldn't do that. 4 pi r squared times the density b over r squared dr. And so you see those, those cancel. So I still have to integrate, though. And I get the integral of dr. So I'm going to get 4 pi b. The integral of dr is going to be r evaluated from 0 to r is just r. So that's my mass n is 4 pi b r. Now I can go back to my, my gravitational force. Fg is going to be g m n m over r squared equals m v squared over r. And let's see what the velocity would be in this case. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel the mass. I'm going to put in my function for m n, which is this. I have g 4 pi b r over r squared equals m v squared over r. And you'll notice that if I multiply both sides by r, they cancel, and I get v squared is g 4 pi b. That's it. It does not change with r. Okay, So that would work in this case. Of course, that assumes that we only have that mass. We do not have a galactic center. So that of itself doesn't agree with the curve that we just saw, right? The curve, the data shows this. This would just show, I'm, I'm sorry, the data shows this. But this would go all the way down to the origin, which it definitely goes slower for closer in. So you have to have a more sophisticated function. But this is one function that you could use for the density that you would be able to calculate or, or est approximate the density of, of dark matter, the density function. So there you go. Flat rotation curves dark matter, density function, the end.